YouTube. Today I'm going to be showing y'all how to make homemade dinner rolls and they are so good. Homemade rolls are one of those things that first time until you make them it's going to seem complicated and weird and too difficult but about number three or four that starts coming together and it just clicks and they're so delicious it's so much better than anything you can buy in the store it's amazing and it's really super simple once you get the method down so here's how we start out over here and just over medium heat I'm just melting half a stick of butter right quarter cup quarter cup of butter to that and I just want to get it warm I've got a cup and a half of milk <laughs> Ricky that was nice <laughs> cup and a half of milk and half a cup of water and I use whole milk in this I have made these before with I think skim milk it works it doesn't taste as good what is that the cat Ricky's messing with the cat it works it doesn't taste quite as good the, the fat in whole milk gives it a nice richness that is really yummy with these dinner rolls three cups of flour this is just plain old purpose flour you can use bread flour if you want to it's going to make the rise a little bit high and, and you just you know you can you don't have to no big deal this is all we're adding to it I've got two tablespoons of active dry yeast I've got two tablespoons of plain old white sugar and about a tablespoon of salt that's kosher salt so if you use table salt use about half that amount Ricky honey you got the sniffles? Having a hard time, babe? <laughs> Ricky's been giving me a hard time. So I started making these rolls when he was little. And I will say I haven't baked much in the past couple of years since we moved in here. It took me, it took me forever to get my kitchen back together. I hadn't baked much. <clears throat> and I have Ricky in the car, and we're coming back from class the other day. And he said, I never make rolls, ever. So the first... 16 years of his life when I was making them once a week evaporated from his brain because I haven't made them recently he hurt his mother's feelings I have to say so this is this is this is my answer so <laughs> all right we're gonna oh, oh stir the yeast and salt the sugar in your flour we're gonna get it nice and incorporated and over here all we're waiting on is to bring this up to temperature we just want the butter barely melted we want this warm but not hot because when we add it over here into our flour we want it to wake up the yeast but not burn it to death and scald it and have it die so anyway give me about four minutes alrighty our stuff water water milk and batter it's just barely warm just enough to melt the butter okay and we've got our three cups of flour and then we added the sugar salt and yeast to the flour and we're just going to stir this in now, this is going to be not enough flour this is going to be wet and sticky and you can do this I, I killed my kitchen egg mixer by the way you can do this in a, in a stand mixer um, with a dough hook attachment that's nice it's helpful if you kill your mixer and you're too cheap to replace it you can do it by hand this way and it really it, you know this is such a simple dough it does not take much at all so we mix this together just to get everybody fully incorporated La -da! and then we're gonna add more flour and we're adding just enough to get a nice stiff dough to where we can turn it out and knead it but don't freak out over kneading. A lot of people, when I first started making bread, I had this, this mental thing about there was a right way to knead and you had to be very particular and, and you could screw it up and yeah, don't worry about all that stuff. <laughs> it's really just not that hard. All right, did you see? It's gotten to the point where when you stir it, it will come away from the sides as it's absorbed that extra flour. So I'd say, and here's the, th here's the thing about making bread though. Often you'll see recipes that will say four to five cups of flour, and it's because how much flour you're gonna need depends on several things. It depends on how much moisture your flour has to begin with. It depends on how humid your day is. It depends on how active your yeast is and the temperature of the room and all kinds of stuff. So start with the lowest amount listed in any recipe that you've got. 
and I think the original recipe I started working from here was um, four and a half, I don't even remember, it's been so long, four and a half cups of flour. Start with the lesser amount into your dough, put a little more on your bench, otherwise known as your countertop, and see what happens. If your dough is sticky, add a little more. If it's too, uh, too wet, that's when you know you need a bit more. But if you start with the lesser amount that you need, you'll know in working it on your bench when you're kneading it, a bench is just a fancy way of saying your countertop, and apparently it's only a bench when you're making bread. But anyway, you'll know if you need more, you'll be able to feel it. Because what you are looking for is that sticky tacky feel. This is all there is to kneading, and there's no magic method especially when making just simple dinner rolls. Don't freak yourself out or, you know, don't do what I did to myself. But you can see that extra cup that I put down on the countertop, the dough has picked it up and it's incorporating it. And all I'm doing is picking up half the dough, folding it over and pushing it down, turning the dough and doing it again. That's it. So you're really just folding that dough over and in on itself multiple times and you don't have to knead this long it's really just going to take a minute most of this flour has already been incorporated and the dough I don't know Ricky how much detail do you think that camera will pick up will it pick up the texture see it's no longer sticky or tacky is it able to get texture that's all you're looking for and this is about ready okay so right here ah. over here I have a bowl and I put just a tiny bit of olive oil in the bottom of the bowl see can you I don't know can you see that yay olive oil and all you're doing is oiling the bowl because at this point we're gonna let our dough have its first rise it's where the yeast is gonna have some happy time and go to work on our bread so once you've oiled your bowl, just turn it over so that your dough is uh, nice and smooth. And I'm going to wash my hands. I'm going to find a clean tea towel. And I'm going to set it right back here where it's warm. And I'm going to leave it alone for about an hour and a half. In that time, it's going to double in size. And I'll come back and show you the next step. Okay, we had about an hour. And we let our dough rise. And look how pretty. It's beautiful. It smells great. Lance Emily and I were over here. Ricky. Have y'all noticed everything he does is just about giving me a hard time? And I forgot to unplug the cooler. I'm sorry about the background noise. I'll try to speak up. Okay, so it's doubled in size. We've just been letting it sit back here where it's been warm and toasty and it got nice and happy. And now we're going to smash it. <laughs> you punch it down just like that. That's all there is to it. And we're going to turn him over a little bit. That's all there is to this first part. Now, at this point, you can make all kinds of different shapes. You can do um, clover leaf rolls. You can do you know three little balls and bake it in a muffin tin. You can roll out a circle and cut it into triangles and make crescent rolls. I'm kind of going easy way with this, and I'm just going to make big pans of soft dinner rolls. So I'm dividing my dough up for no particular reason, except it's a little bit easier to work with, into fourths. Okay, and whatever size you like I'm taking bits like that and we're gonna roll these guy up and they're gonna go right in here and we're just gonna keep doing that until we have filled up our pans get that better size and so this is really just one of those rinse and repeat type things okay so as my butter over here is continuing to melt I'm gonna knock out these rolls and I'll show you what our next step is so I got my dough all portioned out and uh, rolled up in little balls. Don't worry about making them perfectly round because, first of all, they're not going to be. <laughs> Especially once you pick them up and dip them in butter, which is what I'm doing here. If you, for some reason, don't want to dip in butter, which I don't know why, but if you don't, you can just go straight to the pan and then um, brush the tops with a little bit of beaten egg or a little bit of cream. That works too. 
And I realized I've got enough over here, dough over here, I can show y'all something. So these guys are gonna go back over here at the stove to rise. And we're gonna give them about 45 minutes. So just cover them up with a clean towel. Apparently that's the only, clean. nope, I got another one. So 45 minutes, so those will be ready. You know, not too long, but check this out. Okay, with our extra dough, just a little bit on the on the bench. It just dawned on me. I'm not sure where Kelly. Okay, so my sister's been here and she's been organizing my kitchen. I wonder what the odds are of finding my rolling pin. Hang on, Ricky. Watch that dough for a second. Haha! -ha. <laughs> here we go. So what we're gonna do here is make crescent rolls. And I know the ones that come in the smack can that you bang on the counter. Those are delicious. These are better. So take your dough and you're just going to roll it out into a nice big circle. You want to go quarter inch thick or so. My circle's getting square, Ricky. There we go. And I'm going to get a knife and our melted butter. So grab a brush and just right over the top. You could take um, softened room temperature butter and spread it on really thick if you want to. <laughs> In my opinion, butter is always a good thing when you're talking about dinner rolls. Here we go. There. To make crescent rolls, we're gonna go in triangles. My brain shut down for a second. So, and once you're at this point, you can kind of start seeing where the shape comes from. If you've ever unwrapped one of those packages, and then even a little bit smaller than that. And at this point, let me get right here. You simply roll them up. Just like that. And these guys, I will place on a baking sheet and loosely cover. Let's see, crescent roll. How tricky is that? You see, it's not tricky. It's simple. It's easy. So I'm going to finish these off and I'm going to set these on a baking sheet to let them rise at the same time our others are rising. And we'll be back and show you what that looks like. All right, y'all. Our bread has been rising right here. We gave it about 45 minutes. I set it on the back of my stove. And I have my homemade crescent rolls, too. So, ta-da! Aren't you impressed? Ricky looks so impressed. It's amazing. I've got my oven at 375, and we're going to give these guys about 15 minutes. So all I'm going to do is throw them in. Set my timer and walk away. Don't open your oven door while you're doing this. 15 minutes in. See? These are wonderful. And they're very hot. Ah! But, perfect little dinner roll. I gotta say, they're gorgeous. Check that out. Let's see? Doesn't get a whole lot better than that, I'll tell you. And then the crescent rolls. Remember, it was the same dough. We just treated it a little bit differently when we prepped it. Our crescent rolls, that looks like it should be in a magazine. Let me tell you what. Of course, my size, I wasn't real consistent with the sizing when I made them, because that's just kind of how I don't worry about being perfect. Because the flavor of these is unbelievable. So, give them a try. You will be glad you did, and people will think you're amazing, and you really don't even have to work very hard. If you have enjoyed this at all, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button and hit subscribe. Find us on YouTube, Twitter, and Pinterest. Uh, we're on Patreon now. And both of the cookbooks, Happier Holidays and Ground Beef Recipes, are now live uh, on Amazon. So 
hop on over there and check those out. So there you go. That is an easy, delicious, simple homemade dinner roll.